So we have our block assembled and now it's time to start reassembling everything else on the engine. I'm gonna start with my flywheel here and remember to put your key. You can do this a couple ways. I like sliding my key right in my slot here and make sure it fits nice and snug. And then I'm gonna find that slot right here. Actually, I'm gonna do it this way. You can, I can see that it's kind of tapered down. It kind of tapers in towards the center. So I'm gonna drop this into place, line up my keyway here on the shaft of the keyway on my flywheel. I'm gonna drop that key. It might take a little finagling, but I should be able to drop that key just right down in there. Do not forget to put your key in. Otherwise, my flywheel where this is timed with my magneto won't line up, my engine will never fire. So make sure that keyway goes in now. Some people, and I've done this, I'm only saying because I've done this, I go ahead and put my nut on here and tighten it down, and then I forget all about my fan blade here. So, let's not do that. We're going to put our fan blade in position. It should fall in position in just one direction. There we go. And I'm going to put my plastic piece on here for the pull string and my washer. I'm going to drop that into place and then I'm going to go ahead and put the nut on. Now, the next part of this is going to be a little difficult. With my nut, this needs to be torqued to 100 foot pounds, not 100 inch pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and just snug this down and get my torque wrench out and set that to 100 foot pounds. And unless I've got my special tool to hold my flywheel, which I don't, uh, I'm just going to use my cable that I used on the disassembly and kind of lock that in place. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. So again, make sure your key is in the keyway with the shaft and the flywheel. Make sure you got your cover on. Make sure you got your piece on that's going to attach for my pull string. And let's go torque this down. Now, it's not that hard to make a special tool. I took some, some round stock, uh, 3 8 inch, and I drilled holes up into another piece of bar that I contoured to this shape and just the tension of the hole with the round stock in the bar was enough to hold it in place to have to worry about it. And I stuck my handle out about, about 13 inches just to lock it in place. And that worked fine. Um, but if you don't have that or don't have the time, I just have a steel cable here. I'm just gonna fish this through. I'm gonna wrap this around. the outside of my cylinder. I'm going to go around a couple times this way and then I'm going to take the other end. I'm going to go a couple times around the other way just so I don't have to worry about it. So tightening this is the tricky part because you need to secure it and uh, we don't want to put any tension on the drive shaft right here. We don't want to bind that up and ruin our seal or anything like that. So what I did was I found a bolt that's going to go through my bench right there and the other bolt is actually clamped right there in the vise. So that's going to hold it and now I can actually put some, some torque on this and twist it and torque that to I believe it's 100 foot pounds. Couple things you need to look out for our brake and our and our kill switch right here. These bolts right here look very similar to the bolts here, but these are narrower and longer, and these are a little bit thicker. And one is a little bit longer and shorter like that. So make sure you have the right bolts in the right spot, or else you're going to break something. Also, our wire from the magneto to our kill switch here when we release this brake and this basically grounds out our magneto and stops it. So we're going to have to kind of fish that through underneath the flywheel and get it back over to this spot. Uh, another thing you need to be aware of is the magneto will say, it's kind of hard to see here, but it'll say cylinder side and it will say, uh, this one says this side out. 
So sometimes it'll say something different, but you need to make sure you orient this also the right way because if you don't, it's not gonna work properly. So look for the text on here. It's sometimes hard to read. You gotta hit it in the right light, but we're gonna make sure that this side is out when we install it. So let's go ahead and install our brake first. Now on our brake, we have two bolts. One is a little bit longer than the other one. So make sure that those go in the right spot. The longer one goes on where this pivot point is and the shorter one goes here. So when you're looking at it, they're actually the same height approximately when you screw it back into the engine block. Now with our brake, we want to make sure that we fish our wire here through this gap right here between the sheet metal and the block, not between the flywheel and the sheet metal. So it's not too bad, just fish it right through here. Get it to come out the other side. You might have to manipulate your wire a little bit. And then just get that into place and we'll screw this down. So again, with our magneto or what we call our armature here, uh, what we can do is I'm gonna rotate my engine around until I find the magnet and I'm gonna have this attached to that because that's gonna kind of just hold that in place for us. And I'm just gonna get these bolts started first and I'm not gonna tighten them down all the way. I just wanna get them snug. And then we are going to set the gap for our magnet on the flywheel and the armature here and here. And that's going to be between 10 and about 15 thousandths of an inch. I'll usually go about 12 thousandths with my fueler gauge. So let's get these in and then we'll set our gap on our flywheel. Again, remember that you need to read the magneto or magneto slash armature and make sure you have it oriented the right way. Make sure it says this side out or the other side that says this side toward engine. Make sure you have this oriented the right way before you install it. Go ahead and plug that wire in that we pushed over from our brake and we're just gonna attach that since we're here. And then I'm gonna take my fueler gauge. I'm gonna go to 12 thousandths. It can be a little tricky because I gotta slip it in here and I don't have to do it on the magnet, but sometimes it makes my life a little bit easier. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna just back this off a little bit. It's gonna be kind of tough because with the magnet putting tension on this, it's not gonna to wanna to move much, but I'm gonna put slide this kind of in between and let the magnet pull this tight. So the nice part with this is the armature is being pulled towards the flywheel via the magnet and keeping this nice and tight at 12,000. So I don't even have to hold anything. And I'm gonna go ahead and snug this side down and don't get crazy with it, just a little bit will do. Then I'm gonna come over to the other side, pull out my feeler gauge, back this one off just a hair. And you might have to get it off the magnet to pull it back. Otherwise it's not gonna wanna move for you. Make sure you've got your feeler gauge in place before you start. Otherwise it'll wanna pull it right to it. So there we go. So that's nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this bolt down. Again, not too much, just enough to keep it snug. And go ahead and pull your feeler gauge out. And now our gap is set. So I want to give this a spin just to make sure that I'm not hitting. And now we're all set for our gap on our magneto slash armature. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put our carburetor on. We got to put this bracket in place to hold the carburetor. And we can't forget this little guy that goes in between. So make sure this goes behind our piece and you can kind of see which way it's oriented from how the oxidation has happened here. So and this only goes on one direction. It's gonna go right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our bolts on. And 
And then we also have these washers we can't forget about. So the wa white washer is gonna go first and then the rubber washer is going to go next. And then we need to go ahead and put our carburetor on. And we can't forget about our rod here. So we're gonna go ahead and install this on our governor side first and hook it onto our carburetor. All right, so for our arm, we're gonna just hook that into the governor arm here. Make sure that fits in all the way, we're locked in. And then we're gonna go in the back hole here on our carburetor. Just gonna fish that through and slide our carb into place right there. Now, since I'm already here, I'm gonna go ahead and put my gas tank on. I'm just gonna slip this into place and it should just kind of snap down and lock in and then take my hose from underneath. You might have to pull out your carburetor a little bit down below just to kind of get that on the carb and push your hose in. It's a short hose, so you don't have a lot of room to work with. I can kind of push that back into place and make sure my hose is all the way in. Don't forget to grab your pliers and slip your hose clamp into place. So let's go ahead and put on our exhaust slash muffler slash choke mechanism here. That's this here, and we've got our arm here. So make sure this is oriented the right way, and that's just gonna go like that. So what we're gonna do on our, just turn this around a little bit. This part's gonna go on this hole on this arm right here. So let's just get that fished in. Bring that around, make sure everything is clear and working right. And then we are going to connect up our mechanism here to our arm. Slip that into place, bring that around, and get this in the right spot. And then go ahead and install your bolts. So we're gonna come back around to our carburetor and put our cover back on. We're gonna make sure this vent tube goes in this hole here before we install everything and get that in the right spot. And this is what's gonna hold everything together on our carburetor. And so our black, these black bolts are gonna go here and here. And then we got silver ones that are gonna go here and here. Put our filter on and put our cover back on. So last step is reinstalling our spark plug and we'll talk about gapping this and all the things you need to look for in video coming up. But we're gonna go ahead and put this in and then we're gonna torque this to 45 inch pounds. So just a few more steps, we need to pull it on our pull string cover and bolt this down. And then let's put on the top cover. All right, so last step, just put our cover back on. Make sure you pull your handle through. Get that out of the way, get your gas cap out of the way and you wanna kinda of slide this down into place and get those located right on top. Again, you're gonna to need a T25 to tighten these down. And you are all set. So this is a whole four part series on this engine. Part one was tear down of the whole thing. Part two was rebuilding it up to the block, and then part three just now was just taking it from the block and putting everything back on. Stay tuned for part four, where we're gonna go through troubleshooting, 
how to set the spark plug gap, how to look at your spark, how to see what's going on and kind of diagnose why it's not starting and what are some things you can do that'll be coming up. And then hopefully we'll get this bad boy fired up. So if you have any questions on this video, be sure to leave those below. I'll also leave links for the other videos that I've already done and what's coming up. And this is Jacob Altrade saying we'll see you next time.